previewing Kansas State taking on Oklahoma State. Taking a look at this game, interesting. Oklahoma State offensively, one of three teams in the nation to score 30 points in all eight of their games this season. Big reason for that has been the quarterback play of Brandon Whedon. And we're pleased now to be joined by Brandon Whedon here with us on the Palmer and Pollock Show. And Brandon, I got to ask you, it's the second time in school history the Cowboys have started 8-0. It's the first time now since 1945. What do you attribute your team's success so far this season to? Yeah, you know, I think a number of things. I think guys are just staying focused. Uh, you know, taking one one week ahead, you know, one week at time, and and uh, not really listening to what people are saying uh, from outside of, of what we have going on. And uh, you know, I think that comes in part because we've got a pretty mature team and, and the guys that have played a lot over the last couple of years and had some success last year. So I think guys are just staying staying focused and staying humble. Hey, Brandon, when you talk about Stillwater, what what's it like in Stillwater right now? Are people and the fans and just the community. Uh, it's it's awesome. You know, there's a lot of buzz going on right now, and, and uh, everywhere you go, everybody's talking about football and wants to, you know, wants to talk football with you, and, and uh, that's the way it should be. You know, it's a fun time for us, and, and uh, around campus, man, there's, you know, especially with homecoming last week and all the, you know, the ex-players and, and everybody back in town, you know, just a lot of fun, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. Brandon, Justin Blackman, your wide receiver and Blitnikoff Award winner, coming off a season-high 172 yards against Baylor this past weekend. You both form one of the great quarterback wide receiver tandems we see in the football bowl subdivision right now. What is it about Justin Blackman that makes him so dangerous? You know, he's just, uh, you know, beyond his, his freakish athletic ability, I mean, he's, he's a smart receiver. You know, he knows how to use his body. He knows uh, he's a good route runner. Um, he understands defenses and and uh, you know he's always he's always communicating on the sideline. I think that you know goes goes a long way because he's able to tell us some things he sees and, and ideas. And and uh, you know, we ran a pump week and because he saw something. You know it's just uh, it's one of those things that the guy just has an act. He's a smart football player. Um, and he makes everybody else around him you know a better player. And he's just uh, you know it's, it's a joy to play with him. And and uh, you know he's he's a special player. Brandon Joseph Randall's bringing a lot of balance to your offense right now. What's what's that been like? You got the passing game going. You've had that going. What's it been like getting him rolling and him scoring four touchdowns a couple times this year? Yeah, the, the guy's a stud. You know, he's uh, he's one of those guys that uh, you know, hopefully now is starting to get some national recognition because you know what he's been able to do. You look at his numbers. You compare him across the country. I mean, they're they're right there with the, you know the Trent Richardsons of the world. And and uh, so that's some, that's some good company. You know, he's uh, he tells tells me all the time. He's like, you know, off the line, man. I I'm spoiled. He goes, I'm running through the line. I'm not even really getting hit. You know, and so. He's just, uh, he's one of those guys, he's the hardest working, one of the hardest working guys we have on our team. And, and uh, you know, we, we saw it, I saw it last year a little bit, and, and uh, even more, more so this offseason. I mean, the guy just, he grinds, and, and uh, you know, he's just a, just a special player. Well, Brandon, we all know quarterbacks have to take care of their offensive line. We got a fan question for you from Justin Mitchell. He wants to know, what's your offensive line's favorite meal, and who up front can put down the most food? <laughs> Well, I, I know Justin. I figured this question would be coming. You know, he—I um, would have to say—you know, they're they're steak guys. I took them before the year started. Uh, I took them all out to a to a steakhouse here in in, uh, in Stillwater, and, and a couple of them bought the Porter House, and they bought this big, you know, you know 17, 18 ounce uh, out steak, and put it away with ease, and, and they were they were still hungry. So, uh, Grant Garner, my center, is probably the biggest eater. I mean, the guy can just put away food like it's it's like it's his job. So, um, all those guys, you know, they're big, three hundred pounds. They're it was, uh, it was an expensive bar tab. But when you're playing on Sundays, that bill's going to go way up. I guarantee you that. What's it <laughs> rolling in the millions? Let me ask you, it's Halloween. So what's the best costume you've ever worn, Brandon? You know, I think uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a, a, a BMX guy. I, wanted, you know, I was big into motocross. And so I was dressed up as, as Jeff Emmy. Um, you know, so I had dirt bikes and rode dirt bikes. So I, was, I, think, you know, I, was, I think for two or three years running, I think I was uh, – you know, dressed up as a as a motocross rider, and, and uh, you know, as a kid, that's, that's one of my passions. Tell you what, having played pro baseball, if you kept the pinstripes, you could also dress up as a as a pro baseball player with the New York Yankees for Halloween. Brandon, we appreciate yeah. your time. Wish you the best of luck this upcoming weekend against Kansas All right, State. All right, guys, thanks for having me. Brandon Whedon and the Cowboy offense might be licking their chops. Looking at this game against Kansas State, remember, the Wildcats gave up 505 passing yards against Oklahoma. They can't look past Bill Snyder in Kansas State because November 12th 
game on the road against Texas Tech with Seth Dagey. That could be one of the great shootouts we see this season between two quarterbacks. And, of course, November 26th, Bedlam, a game that not only will have Big 12 implications, it'll have BCS National Championship implications as well. Let's look at Oklahoma State, Kansas State. Break this one down. What has to be a key for you in this game? Well, I mean, Oklahoma State's defense is still going to be the key. Last week, I tell you what, they shocked the heck out of me. I mean, they, they surprised me a lot because Robert Griffin and Baylor comes in high-flying, one of the best offenses in the country, one of the safest offenses in the country. When I say that, they don't turn the football over. Yeah. Oklahoma State had five turnovers. It's amazing. They, it was 45 to nothing after the it's first amazing. possession in the third quarter. I mean, it was a smack you around game I mean so I really want to see the defensive side of the football with Oklahoma State continuing to go along that direction not it doesn't always have to be turnovers but they formed it forced at least one turnover in every single ball game they're number one in the nation by a long margin and yeah. turnover margin and, and if Brandon Whedon continues his high flying act with that with taking care of the football yeah. th this team's legit we, we we have questions but it's still legit there's a reason why Oklahoma State is number one in turnover margin it's because of that defense David they've not taken the football away 26 times Ridiculous. in the last five games and defensive coordinator Bill Young told me earlier this year the goal is to get three a game. Well they're playing better than that right now and he lets the players get out of extra conditioning and practice if they register turnovers in games. So you know as a defensive player you get motivated then to want to go and take that football away but you know I think in this game really comes down I think to the running game at Oklahoma yeah. State. And that's something that never gets talked about. We talk about Brandon Whedon. We talk about Justin Blackman. And they've had other guys like Tracy Moore, Michael Harrison step up and make plays. Hubert Anyum now out for the season yeah. with a foot injury. Josh Cooper makes plays as well. But this has been the best running team in the Big 12 for the last five years. It's the dirtiest little secret going on in Stillwater. This guy, Joseph Randall, has tremendous speed, can make guys miss in the second level, ran a 10.6 100-meter dash coming out of high school out of Pretty Texas. Solid. Jeremy Smith spells him, and Joseph Randall at six foot one. he's got the range to play wide receiver, lined up in the slot, caught a touchdown pass against Missouri just a few weeks ago. Joseph Randall and Jeremy Smith, they can get it done on the ground, and it's that running game that opens up a lot of the big play-action passing opportunities for Brandon Weed. Yeah, and I think the running game for Kansas State is something that presents a challenge when you look at Oklahoma State. They're really... I, they're really good in the secondary, really experienced in the secondary, but Colin Klein running downhill. You talked about John Hubert as your guy last week, didn't you, as your yeah. X Factor. I mean, can both of them, I think I look at him as like an Ontario McCaleb for Cam Newton last year, a year ago, the guy that can get on the edge. So Colin Klein in this running game, can they can they play a little bit of keep away? Can they keep that physical nature? Against Oklahoma, they started it, but they couldn't finish it. But the pro bottom line is, you get them in passing situations if the secondary is good enough to do that, or if the off if the front seven is good enough to do that, Oklahoma State will win in a shootout. See here, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma still in control of their respective destinies inside the Big 12 Conference. Of course, they'll meet at the end of the regular season at Bedlam. That's a game, of course, that could determine who potentially plays in the BCS National.